Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday is from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. Our reading today is part of Jesus' teaching following one of his healings of the man born blind and the Pharisees' callous reaction to that miracle from chapter 9. It's a tale of contrasting responses. The Pharisees, entrusted with spiritual leadership, exhibit a callous disregard for the restored man and casting him out of their community. Even after witnessing the miraculous restoration of his sight, they prioritize their own agendas over restoring him into fellowship with his community. Their failure to embody compassion starkly contrasts with Jesus' role as, as, as the Good Shepherd, who not only heals, but restores his flock to a loving and inclusive community. In chapter 10, Jesus describes himself as the Good Shepherd, drawing a sharp contrast between his sacrificial love and the self-serving actions of the religious leaders of his day. In the first 10 verses of this chapter, Jesus has likened the Pharisees as thieves and bandits who are loose among the flock. Our reading today continues to contrast Jesus' role in relationship to God's faithful followers against the brokenness of the religious leaders of the day. In our reading for today, we hear Jesus detail further some of the most important differences. Firstly, God's love and care for us. And secondly, God's desire to restore us to community in which the love for the other is foundational. Jesus says in verses 11 and 14, I am the good shepherd. Well, what does our passage today tell us about Jesus' understanding of his role as the good shepherd? In verse 11, Jesus tells us, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Here, Jesus exemplifies the depth of God's love, willingly sacrificing himself for the sake of his flock. Unlike the hired hands who abandon the sheep in times of trouble, Jesus remains steadfast in his commitment to our well-being, even to the point of laying down his life. Yet beyond this profound act of sacrifice, Jesus also reveals the deeply personal nature of God's love for each individual within his own fold. I know my own, and my own know me, he declares in verse 14. This intimate knowledge speaks to the heart of our human longing to be truly known and loved. In our lives often marked by broken relationships, sometimes betrayals between us, Jesus offers us a radical alternative, the unwavering love and acceptance of the Good Shepherd. God knows us intimately, understands our needs, and cares for us tenderly, just as a shepherd knows and cares for each sheep in his flock. There is great comfort in knowing that there is someone we can be in relationship with who truly wants to know us and to love us. Our human relationships are not the easiest to navigate. We, we don't always know what we want. And other people are the same, and so plenty of mistakes and bumps and bruises happen. And on top of that, unfortunately, our modern world also has its reasons to know more about us, as we're all well aware of. Our world's desire to know and to control everything has become more and more in, uh, a part of our uh, attention. More and more of our personal data is being tracked, recorded, and can be used both to help us and our world, but also, unfortunately, to target us for the purpose of growing selfish profit or swaying opinion for their gain of worldly power. In our modern context, where trust is often scarce and privacy is under siege, the promise of God's unchanging love shines ever brighter. Our relationship with God 
is different from our relationships with other people. We can trust God 100%. God is unchanging and unconditional in God's desire to know us and to love us. We can step away from God, but God will never leave our side. This is a deeply important truth that Jesus is describing with the image of the Good Shepherd, who will give his life to protect us and to guide us toward the safety of God's fold. God will never give up on us. Now, the second important aspect of the image of the Good Shepherd that our passage illuminates is the proclamation found in verse 16. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. Jesus is speaking here of bringing together not only the sheep of Israel, but also those from other folds, symbolizing the inclusion of all believers into one unified flock under God's care. This reflects God's expansive love that transcends boundaries and welcomes all into the fold of his grace. This shepherd image reminds us of that expansive nature of God's love. In God's kingdom, there are no divisions or exclusions. All are welcome into the fold of his grace. This vision of unity amidst diversity challenges us to break down the barriers that divide us extending the same love and acceptance that we have received to others. There is only one eternal Good Shepherd, and Jesus embodies that image. Only God is above the earthly brokenness that is constantly and selfishly finding its way into, our, into the beautiful wholeness of God's fold, God's community, the scriptural kingdom of heaven. The image of the Good Shepherd offers us hope and reassurance in the face of life's challenges. Through his sacrificial love and intimate knowledge of each of us, Jesus draws in and restores us into loving community, where we find refuge from the storms of life. As we journey together as God's flock, may we embody the same selfish love and compassion that we have received from our Good Shepherd, extending grace and acceptance to all who seek refuge in his fold. I would now like to invite you to join with me in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. Rejoicing in the resurrection of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Strengthen ministers of word, sacrament, and service who are called to shepherd your people. We pray for Todd, Bishop of Huron, Anne, our Metropolitan, Linda, our Primate, Chris, National Indigenous Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our Diocese of Huron, we continue to pray for the parishes in the London and Oxford Deanery, for their clergy and people. Unite us in mission and send us into the world with your love. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory. We pray for the beauty and health of the earth. Help us to protect and care for soil, air, water, and all the creatures you have made. Make us ever conscious of how we use and consume the gifts you have given us on the earth and in the oceans. Open our eyes to see creation as good, useful, and worthy of care. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory. We pray for peace in our world. Sustain the leaders of every nation with your righteousness and abundant mercy. Humble those who seek to use power for gain and foster the work among world leaders for the well-being of us all. Let us pray to the Lord, hear us, Lord of glory. You carry us tenderly and we pray for those in need. In our parish family today, we pray especially for Joyce, Debbie, Sue, John, Barb, Doreen, Mary, and Mary Rose. We pray also for those experiencing ongoing long-term health concerns, praying for Carol, Bertha Rose, Karen, Tracy, Brian, Alex, Vicki, Miriam, Max, Norma, Charlotte, Aubrey, Erlina, Claude and Carol, Marie, Kim, Janet, Jan, Florence, Charlene, Bud, 
Amy, Betty, Ray, Jason, Mark, Kath, Jim, and Odile. Hear the cry of those who call upon your name and send caregivers to provide help to all in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. You breathe your spirit of peace into us. Enlivened by the Spirit, equip us to bring new life to all the blessings and struggles we meet in our daily lives. We pray for all the members of St. Mark's. We ask that you grant us patience, kindness, and love in service to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We remember those who now worship at your throne. And with expectant hearts, we await the day when all will behold you in glory. We give thanks today for the life and witness of Vicki Armstrong, and we pray for the repose of her soul. We pray for her children, Trish, Elaine, and David, her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and all their extended family during their time of grief. We also give thanks for the life and witness of Dwayne Bauer, and we pray for the repose of his soul. We pray for his wife, Elaine, and their children, Sue, Bill, and Brian, and their grandchildren and great-grandchildren and all their extended family during their time of grief. Wipe away our tears and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. With bold confidence in your love, we place all who we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.